Welcome back. We're going to talk cardiac research with my next guest, Dr. Mike Jones and Dr. Mike Rukavina. Now, cardiac research, Dr. Jones, why? Well, cardiac research, uh, I think, is an important part of what we offer at Baptist Hospital. While we are not a university hospital, in fact, we're a patient-centric hospital, I think that cardiac research helps our patients in a couple of ways. First of all, the physicians involved in cardiac research have got to, because they're doing the research, keep up, so to speak. We have to be at the top of our game. Everything we do in the cath lab when we're doing a cardiac research study is automatically, every patient reviewed mostly in the Harvard uh, Clinical Core Labs. Uh, all of our patient outcomes are reviewed. We, have, we communicate with the leaders at universities around the world in terms of cardiac research by emails and webinars, what have you. So it helps the patient, first of all, because we have to keep up and stay abreast. Secondly, it gives our patients the chance of getting cutting edge technology months to years before they would otherwise have the opportunity to get the technology. So I think it's good for us and good for our patients. Now you mentioned cutting edge technology and Dr. Skinner mentioned stents. Now tell me, there's different types of stents and you're, and you're doing a study, I believe it's called the ABSORB trial. The ABSORB 3 trial. Stent. Tell yes. me about that. Well, just to start off in terms of background, I think everybody knows what a balloon angioplasty is. This is a technique that's been around since the late 1970s where doctors go in with the balloon on a catheter, put the balloon across a blockage in a coronary, and blow up the balloon to open up the blockage. Then about um, in, a, in the early 90s, actually, we got stents which are metal scaffolds. And we begin to use stents or these metal scaffolds instead of just using the balloon because they're more durable. They're more, they last longer, in fact. And then about 10 years ago, we begin to use drug-coated stents. And drug-coated stents are better than bare metal stents in general because they're more durable than the bare metal stent. Complications are reduced, the patients do better. Now, there are, there are, however, fortunately rare but real complications of metal stents and arteries. They don't come out. If I put a metal stent in you, it's there for the rest of your life. So there are some downsides to that. Stents can block off side branches. They can reduce the uh, ability of the artery to expand and contract with various influences where the body would want it to, say during exercise or so on, so on and so forth. Uh, blood clots can form late, even years after a stent is put in. Tissue can grow in to those areas. So there are a number of, as I said, rare but real complications of coronary stents. So the ABSORB trial uh, is basically letting us look at a new kind of stent that we don't even call it a stent, we call it a scaffold. I think most people know what resorbable sutures are. You know, the doctor sews up your arm and says, you don't need to come back to have it out because your body's going to absorb it. Well, in order to get around these late complications of stents, uh, Abbott Corporation has developed a stent that is made out of a material called a polylactide, and it's resorbable. It starts to break down after it's done the job of opening the artery within months, and in two years, it's completely gone. So there's no residual. We think that this will offer our patients a real advantage in terms of especially the younger patients who are being stented. The ABSORB trial allows us to take people who need a coronary stent and randomize them to either the absorbed stent or a metal stent. And then we follow them for the duration of the study to see what their long and short term complications are or aren't. And that's one, one example of cutting edge. Now, Dr. Rukavina, too, there is a, a study about renal denervation. And that's kidney. It's really not heart, but it's part of the cardiac research trial. What is it and why, why do that? The, the enlightened study is a study of patients with resistant hypertension. So in the United States, there are 70 million people with hypertension, and approximately 10% of those patients are resistant. In other words, they're not, their blood pressure is not well controlled with three or four medications. So the Enlighten is uh, a trial testing a, uh, a means of sort of denervating the renal uh, uh, the renal arteries and um, um, when you say renal artery that uh, the nerves there help control blood pressure and the blood pressure affects the heart 
That's exactly right. And that's why you do the nerves? So uh, by ablating the nerves that are uh, uh, supplying the uh, kidneys, we think that we alter the uh, both the fluid and salt uh, properties, the balance that the kidneys uh, create, as well as the hormonal influences of the kidneys. So we're hoping that uh, renal denervation will help to control blood pressure. And that's done by way of catheter also? Yes. And you don't have, not an operation, but a catheter. It's vaccine. not an operation. There's a catheter that's advanced, much like a, a heart catheterization. It's a okay. catheter that's advanced from the artery of the leg up to the kidneys that way. All right, we're going to take a break. Be right back with more cardiac research.